Welcome everyone, I am Mad Capper, and this will be my very first Raid Shadow Legends YouTube video. Yesterday I was able to finally put together my Immortal Comp for the Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss. I've had a lot of people in my clan and a lot of people in the streams that I visit asking me how did I do it, what champions did I use, what's the gear, what's the speeds. So rather than trying to explain it to everyone over and over again, I thought I'd make a video, post it on YouTube for everyone to share. Before I let you go, don't forget if you do like the video, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to subscribe, if I get enough subscribers, I might continue doing content for questions that no one seems to answer, but I might be able to help you out with. Okay, so I'm going to have to add a little different audio here because I messed up the last one. What I'm basically trying to say here is we are a Nightmare Clan Boss clan. We are part of a shard of clans. There are Ultra Nightmare uh, shards or clans or sub-clans, whatever, however you want to put it as part of our group. I'm in one of the nightmare ones, so it was imperative that my first goal be don't mess with my nightmare two key clan boss uh, composition, which I didn't. I do use a cult brawler in both. It's a simple way of doing it. I'll explain it later on, but I still have the two key, and yet I'm able to also go to ultra nightmare, ultra nightmare and do a two key. As you see up there, 70 million. I do a two key there. I do two key both. I get the transcendent chest, and I'm able to uh, I'm able to help the clan out in every way possible, which is the ultimate goal: is to help out your clan, especially in a game like this where there's not a whole lot of clan interaction. This is where we all intersect, so I wanted to make sure I was able to do that. First off, I just want to take a quick note to apologize for the awful, and I mean awful editing I'm gonna have on this one. I did a full one take try, and it was not good. The audio sounded just horrific to me so I've changed it out here I'm doing an overlay I'm learning how on the fly to use Filmora I haven't used it in three years I used to do uh, civilization videos so I'm, I'm learning as I go but uh, bear with me and hopefully you'll learn some stuff so let's talk about Sir Nick he is the linchpin he is the number five seed in this composition he is what makes it work so uh, the biggest thing to note is that he does have the speed he has gear that so I actually had to dumb down my Cernic in order to make this work. I had much better stats with them, and I actually had to dumb them down quite a bit. And it's unfortunate because I do use them in my dragon runs. I do use them in arena. But uh, so I'm at 58,000 health. I used to be at 77,000. But the key to this thing is health is irrelevant for this comp. Actually, everything on here is irrelevant for this comp. The health does help his damage a bit, so he can damage a little bit. Uh, his crit rate at 90, I do want it to be 100 as crit damage. Uh, you can go as loud as you can. But the key here is, is that he's doing a speed of 192. 192 is important because the Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss is 191. You can actually get away with 199 as your speed on this comp. The reason why I am not doing that, the reason why I've chosen instead to do 192, is just in case I wanted to switch out my Purge which is my stun purge for a block debuff. The block debuff would have to go before Saint Nick to make sure that he goes last to put the block one turn block debuff up for everyone. I don't have that currently, but I, it is future proof by allowing that 191 slot. 192 Sir Nick right now, he's the guy that goes last. He goes right before the clan boss goes. And his job is to put up his unkillable buff. So I'm gonna hit that up twice. You're gonna get the unkillable and then you're gonna move on to the next. All right, the second hero that makes this composition work, we're going to move down to our Roshkard the Tower. Roshkard the Tower, he is the immortal comp. So he's the second of the whole I can't die scenario. The key to him is, again, it doesn't matter. His stats don't matter. His looks don't matter. I don't even have him fully ascended right now. I don't even have a necklace or a banner for him because, frankly, I don't need it. I don't need his accuracy. I don't need his crit rate. I don't need his damage. I don't need his defense, HP, or attack. All I need is his speed. And his speed has to be one higher than good old Saint Nick. So let's take a look at his speed stats. And the heck job editing continues. So here it is. Uh, he's got health. He's got 57k. He probably could have more. It doesn't matter. I don't care. 
Health is not the issue here. It is his speed at 193. There is nothing else that really matters on what he does. Yes, it would be nice if he did a little more damage. And yes, you can min-max this as you go to give more damage, whether it be crit rate, crit damage. He also has debuff accuracy. I can get that up once I uh, send him to six stars. But for this purpose, he is exactly where he needs to be. And that is 193 speed. It is simply for his A3, which gives him an amazing four turn cooldown immortal buff. I just realized this edit is going to be even worse because I'm playing music in the background. Anyway, this is Light Sworn. He is at 196 speed. The reason for that is he needs to be faster. He needs to be the third man in. And he is going to create the revive on death stop gap where you have that one turn where sir nick is not protected by either immortal or unkillable again stats don't matter simply the speed it is nice that he has high defense so he can do a little bit of damage uh his masteries are messed up just so you're aware i do know i'm supposed to have giant slayer i have war master i was in a hurry when i was respecking him he was the reason my unkillable wasn't working because i had turn meter boost stuff happening and it was ruining the runs uh so this i when i changed it i just wasn't paying attention i went down the left side i'm so used to doing it i should have him in giant slayer i will definitely fix that later don't want to spend the 150 gems on it my boy next up my boy a cult brawler he is the glue that puts this all together or more accurately he's the poison that puts down the damage a cult brawler i use in my nightmare campaign as well as my ultra nightmare sorry not campaign clan boss so i do need the ability to switch him in and out which is why i have nice little divine divine speed gear there to get him to the 197 which is one faster than light swarm that allows me to use him in ultra nightmare but I actually have one piece that I can switch out that brings him down to a low level that'll bring him to Nightmare. So I can actually use him in the morning for Nightmare, get my Nightmare runs in, switch out that one piece, and then I can use him for Ultra Nightmare. It's a very handy way to do it. It took me a little while to get that working. But uh, again, if you don't know a Cult Brawler, he's simply there to lay down the poisons. So here's, here's what I do is I'll swap that out. I'll go down to a speed set. I have a nice little handy uh, piece of speed here. It's uh, it's the plus eight capper. There it is. So I go to that speed. I drop 19 speed, and he's the right speed for the Nightmare Clan boss. It works perfectly for me. It costs me 50,000 silver every time I do it. Small price to pay to get Ultra and regular Nightmare Clan boss treasure loot. It's what I have to do, right? Now, to round out the team... And arguably the most important on the team is Doom Priest. Doom Priest is actually slower than everyone. The reason why I did that is I need to use her whenever I have a magic affinity boss on Nightmare because Occult Brawler is weak affinity and he gets stunned all the time. If he gets stunned, he doesn't place poisons. If he doesn't place poisons, I don't do enough damage. So I take Bulwark out, I put in Doom Priest so at least Doom Priest can cleanse the stuns. It works okay. I still don't do enough damage. Ultimately, what I'd like to do is get a second poisoner of a different affinity, and I can swap a cult out whenever I have to deal with a magic affinity clan boss. But for now, this is why I do it, which is why she's at two eight or sorry, one eighty three. The good news is one eighty three works because she just doesn't take the first turn. She starts second turn, and she's the first ever since. And it works just fine, as you'll see later in the run. So again, nothing else really important there. She does have a lot of health because I do use her in other areas. Uh, she's got really, uh, really okay defense. If I were min-maxing, I'd probably increase health, increase the uh, defense a bit. And doesn't need accuracy. Doesn't, I mean, could use resistance. I have her heavy resistance. The only reason is because I used her to get through one of the spider levels. I don't remember which one. Whichever one was, uh, was the spirit affinity. Um, her 196 debuff resistance was good for that level uh, for the poison. Anyway, so that Doom Priest is the fifth one. So what we'll do next is uh, we'll put it in, we'll put him in action, and uh, we'll show you a little bit of a run, and we'll see how much damage I can do. All right, enough talking about it. Let's put it into action. Here it is. We're gonna attack Ultra Nightmare here, and we're gonna show you the comp in action so i've got one key available i'm going to show it to you we're going to speed it up after that and at the end we'll chat a bit about 
what it means, what it looks like, and maybe some alternate things you can do to make it work for you. One thing to keep in mind is that it is very important. The first four turns here are very important. I'm going to show you what happens. So we're going to attack. We're going to attack. I use his A2 here. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure you just attack. Same with Rosh. You can use his A1, A2 here. Just attack with it. And then we're going to put up the unkillable. That's to start the turn meter rolling on each of these. Start the cooldowns. Look, now you've got your Doom Priest starting her debuff or her debuff removal. Put up the attack. That gives us a little extra hit. Good on us. There's the poison. Again, all he's going to do is attack. Again, this whole turn is nothing but attacks because you want to get that cooldown to one turn on everyone. Okay, now we're on turn three. This is turn three. You're going to see Doom Priest unkillable off. You're going to see Occult Brawler unkillable off. You're going to see Light Sworn unkillable off. And that's where we're going to we're going to hit Immortal. Put him in Immortal. Now we've got two turns. Now here's the key is that Sir Nick here, Santa, is going to lose one turn of his Immortal uh, ability when he takes his turn here. And that's why we need Light Sworn. So we're going to take the turn here. He's going to attack and you can see he's down to one turn. He gets stunned. No big deal. It gets cleansed. Boom. Now we're on turn four. Now this is important. You hit then you're going to do the Poisoner again. He's going to hit. Note that he never gets five, so he never takes that extra turn that his A2 uses. Now we got to put up the Revive on Death. That's very important. You don't see it now, but you will definitely see it. Now we can put it on Auto, and we can let it go. So, some alternates here. As you can see, there are three champions that need to have some form of Don't Die, whether it's Revive on Death, Unkillable, or Immortal. The reason why I like this group is first off, Sir Nick, he is very, I haven't even min-maxed him. He's actually in really crappy gear, and yet he still works. So imagine if I min-maxed him, kept that speed going, but got him a lot more damage. Same with Light Sworn, he's got a three attack A1, and if I properly master him, instead of being an idiot, then I can make sure that that works as well. Same with Roshkart, all three of them are reasonable damage dealers. You've got a defense and two HP based heroes or champions which is way better than attack champions as far as the amount of damage they're able to do so there's a lot more damage they can do anyway i'm going to stop talking i'm going to speed it up i might slow it down at one point because i want you to see uh what happens uh the first time that actual revive on death is needed and then we'll like i said i'll, I'll go over some final thoughts and then uh then it's up to you guys in the comments below All right, I want to join in here because I want you to see there's the revive on death. That's what makes this thing complete. That's what makes it work. And that's why we did what we did. We have Light Sworn in there and it just keeps going until I say stop. Now keep in mind, you will actually time out if you go too long, too many turns. I haven't taken the chance or the, I haven't taken the time to actually count the number of turns I use, which would really be able to tweak it. On my phone, the first time I tried this, I actually went 35 minutes and it timed out. I went 25 minutes, I got the right damage I wanted, and I never looked back. Here, um, we're gonna see, I'm on the Plarium, Plarium uh, uh, platform for the PC, so it's a lot faster than the phone, so I'm gonna have to stop quicker. We'll see where I'll probably stop around 16 minutes. I'm foreshadowing, I know exactly when I stopped. But uh, let's fast forward to that point and then uh, we'll watch the end. Alright everybody, we are now at the point where I'm going to wind it down here. I'm going to play out the last final turns here. I'm not going to use Light Sworn um, pretty soon here, I believe. I hope. Yeah, I've turned it off auto now. Uh, I'm winding down at about 16 minutes. Obviously this is taking a lot more time. So if I would have just stopped it, maybe paused and kicked out, that's fine. I like letting them die. It's kind of like a 
you know, a last heroics. But notice I did not use his revive. So this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Say goodbye to Santa Claus because he ain't coming to your house this year. Boom. He actually killed both of them uh, because of the damage that Santa Claus was being taken and absorbed by Doom Priest. They both died. So, so, so sorry. So sad. Uh, but it was bound to happen eventually. So uh, once again, we are, I don't know why, what I was waiting for here. I was probably talking too much in the original. Anyway, so there's the shot. He's going to take his shot. Uh, Rush Card's going to take his shot. And then, oh yeah, first he does the stun. Watch the damage on a cult brawler here. This is 16 minutes in. A cult brawler absolutely gets rocked. 851,000 damage. So there it is. 33.83 million damage dealt. That is a two key number. Uh, I'm really excited and happy I was able to do it with this team. You notice a cult brawler, over 23.7 million damage of that 33. He is what makes it work. Uh, Sir Nick's got 3.2, Roshkar's got 2.5, and you got over 2 with Lightsworn and Doom Priest of uh, 1.5. I can probably min-max them and get that damage further, which is what I want to do. I could probably get this to a 1 key if I really paid attention but right now that's not my priority my priority is to give this here so anyway so that is my video for you to do today i hope you liked it once again if you liked it please give it a thumbs up share it with your friends if you do like the content let me know in the comments down below and i will do further videos i might even get my uh my old webcam working so you can see my ugly bald-headed mug when i do these things anyway until then thank you very much most importantly make sure keep your stick on the ice and most importantly don't eat yellow snow. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.